The wind of change is blowing through the continent. Whether we like it or not, this growth of national consciousness is a political fact. Well, that's what British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan once said about Africa. That was back in 1960. But you could easily apply those words today to the continent of Europe. The battle for Europe is about to begin as EU elections threw up a bigger desire for reform from within, rather than just the Brexit view of bailing out into the dark and stormy night. Ironically, this may just be what Britain would have wanted before the country shook itself apart. The Brexidiots and the Ramonas are still battling out in the race to the bottom, leaving the UK without a Prime Minister and the government rudderless. Remainers seem to be ahead by a nose with 40%, outvoting even the successful eight-week-old Brexit party by 5%. The European elections are the second largest democratic vote in the world, some 400 million people eligible to cast ballots. That's 6% of the world's population. The largest uh, voting population is India, that has an electorate of 900 million. Together with Australia, Spain and South Africa, some 18% of the world's population have been able to vote in the last 30 days. Democracies can look messy when winds of change blow, but the messiness is proof that adjustments are working their way through. And what changes they face, the digital age has provided a radically different landscape for business and government. New ideas, concepts, methods being injected to minds all over the world. Personal privacy is becoming a thing of the past. All of these actions threaten the status quo. In this time of change, the current stock market looks very overstretched, especially in the gale of the trade dispute between the US and China. By late May, quarterly stock prices were down more than 3% in the US and 8% in Hong Kong, admittedly from near all-time highs. It's difficult to see why share prices are so resistant. Inflation is down, but so is economic growth. Corporate earnings growth is tailing off. Well, we're three years past this current seven-year growth cycle. There's too much hope that the Chinese and American authorities will rescue falling markets by reining in interest rates. That's a game that can last only so long. The winds of change are sweeping, but we should not be surprised if markets are blown off course and maybe lose another 10% by midsummer.